Hello, I'm Dr. Pierre Simon, and it's great being back with you once again. Now we're in this new series that we started last time called New Beginnings. If you'd like to read the entire series, uh, you can find it in the blog. I'll go to my website, newhorizonscounseling.org and uh, look up the blogs and uh, it's um, in a recent blog in there uh, that you can read the entirety of this series that we're talking about. New beginnings, it's change, isn't it? You know, whenever you make changes, those new beginnings occur. Last time we we introduced new beginnings and this time we're in fear and doubt. You know, when you start a a change, to make a change, you've decided, well, I'm gonna do something different. Well, kind of what creeps up is, well, the unknown. You know, I'm afraid what's gonna happen or is this gonna work or not work? And, And that sometimes makes us hesitant to make changes. Uh, And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today and giving us a little more hope in making some of those changes. So overcoming fear and doubt in new beginnings. Fear and doubt is formidable. It's uh, it's like a barrier for for many people, not for everyone. There are some people, they just jump right ahead and, uh, you know, they'll they'll jump in. I'll usually do anything at at least once. And then I decide, oh, that works. Okay, I'll do it again. If not, oh, I don't like that. I'm not going to do that again. Um, And and then other times I'll think it through. But uh, I always look back and think, well, I should have done this or I should have done that. Um, I think a couple of things i I look back and I think something I, I missed was I always wanted to jump out of an airplane, you know, with a parachute. And, and uh, um, in Daytona Beach, where I grew up, um, the land is close by and they they have uh, parachuting uh, out of the airport there in, in the land. And so um, I always thought, well, I'm going to do that, you know, I'm going to do that. And I never got around to that. Uh, didn't get around to skiing, snow skiing. Uh, something that I, that I missed, but I tried to do all those little things that, uh, you know, you, adventurous type things. Um, but then you, you, you get a little fear and doubt and you think, well, you know, that's pretty dangerous. I, I don't think I'm going to try that one, you know, and, or, you know, that well, that's too complicated. I don't think I'm going to do that. But if you have hope, if, if you have that faith or trust that you can do it, well, then there's nothing holding you back. So making even those little changes in our life, as you know, a new year comes and you want to make, a, make it a better year than the previous year, you want to make those little changes to, uh, well, kind of feel a little different too, to feel better about this new year as, as you make those little changes. But that fear and doubt creates a barrier. It's an emotional barrier that impedes our journey toward new beginnings. The anxiety of the unknown, one might call it, or the fear of rejection. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a history of, of failure uh, that contributes to that fear and that doubt that wells up within us. And of course, we're not failures. We, you know, we've succeeded more than failed in our lifetime every one of us are that way or we wouldn't be here right now. But those little failures, we remember those, you know, and we think, ah, oh, you know, I don't know, that could happen again. We don't want that to happen again. Faith, particularly in Christian counseling, can be crucial in overcoming those kinds of challenges. You know, we, we want to go beyond what we're afraid of doing or we're afraid of talking about or discussing with someone. We want to stretch that comfort zone and and go beyond that. But how do we do that? What we're talking about today is grasping that faith in God, uh, whether it's through Christian counseling or or through your church or however you might want to do that, uh, to give you that little extra something to take that next step or take the next step to be a little bit longer, a little, little, little uh, longer stride uh, to get going in that direction that you've been hesitant in going in all these years. So faith, particularly in, in Christian counseling, can be crucial in overcoming challenges such as fear or doubt uh, when embarking on those new beginnings or those changes in your life. This idea is supported by both theological perspectives and psychological theories. So more and more studies are coming out bolstering faith, talking about faith and uh, how it, it makes us better. 
Um, it, it, we do better when we have that increase in trust. I can do this. I can do this particularly because I did something else yesterday that was difficult. And if I can do that, I can do this. Or I got this far. So it brings hope. Each time, a little more hope. That hope grows. It, it, it strengthens. So psychological theories that acknowledge the influence of spirituality and belief systems on human behavior and resilience. Research in psychology has shown that faith can be a significant factor in resilience and coping. You have things in your life that you have doubts that are difficult. Maybe you go to work and there's an area of work that's difficult for you and it just it, it makes it hard to get through the day because you're afraid you're going to have to deal with that or you're you're um, uncertain if you can accomplish this and, and you're afraid you're going to get make a mistake and well if you have that faith the hope you start to believe in yourself more and as you start to believe in yourself more you're realizing with god's help you can do anything if he wants you to do something you can do it and we're going to talk about some examples of that later but there's a, a handbook uh, of religion religion and, and health uh, that came out in 2012 that discusses how religious faith can provide emotional support and a sense of meaning and community uh, uh, support, which is essential in overcoming these kinds of challenges. Even positive psychology, a field of, that focuses on strengths that uh, enable individuals to thrive, also acknowledge the role of faith. According to other uh, studies that have been done, Seligman is one of them that, that uh, did a study on spirituality and faith, and the, uh, they found that it can contribute to a sense of purpose uh, and well-being essential for facing and overcoming challenges. What do you have faith in? Do you have faith in how smart you are, how quick you can think, uh, how much money you have, how good of a driver you are. We all have faith in something. And, uh, I get up in the morning, I have faith that the sun's gonna come up. I, I, you know, I just know it's gonna come up. Well, I know that because it came up yesterday and it's always come up. I don't think about it. I just get up and anticipating and I know it's going to be that way. Well, faith in general is kind of like that. You know, you get in your car and you, you push the button and the engine starts. Well, unless you've been having car trouble, you've got faith the engine's gonna start. You don't really think about, is the engine gonna start if I push the button? I don't know. Well, I'm afraid to push it now. Uh, well, I don't know. I hope it starts when I push it. Well, you don't have that fear and apprehension leading up to it because it's proven for the last few months, at least, that the car is starting every time you push the button. That's faith. That's uh, hope, that's trust. And, and integrating these things into healing uh, is, is a process that's a powerful tool in Christian counseling, um, as well as any kind of counseling, but a little more so with Christian counseling because you're, you're, you're applying faith in the healing process of whatever the situation is that you're dealing with. According to McMinn's Psychology, Theology, and Spirituality in Christian Counseling study, counselors can use scriptural teachings and prayer to help clients find strength and guidance, and that makes it a little more helpful. Uh, very often, I, I found through clinical Christian counseling or clinical pastoral counseling, uh, individuals will, will, will come in, and in approaching the problems that way, from that faith-based perspective, very often they'll say, well, I've learned more in just a few sessions here than I did over there in a year. Uh, or I, I, I feel like things are improving much faster than they ever did before. It, because it's not just the counseling, it's the faith that's applied in the counseling. It's the help that we get through God, through his spirit helping us in this work that we do every day of getting through our life. 
that a little additional something gives that extra passion, that extra power, um, but also insights are enhanced when that occurs. And it doesn't mean that happens to everybody, but it does mean that when we ask God to help us in whatever situations we're in, he does. He, he comes and he helps in, in some way. You don't even have to be, let's say, a Christian. You don't even have to be a Christian. If you're asking God for help, he's going to give you that help in a way that you'll know it's him doing it. And then it's up to you what you're going to do with it. There's growing empirical evidence supporting the efficacy of faith integrated counseling. For instance, uh, Richards and Bergen's in 2005 study, A Spiritual Strategy for Counseling and Psychotherapy, provides evidence that spiritual interventions can effectively bring about psychological, uh, which is mental and emotional healing and growth when aligned with the client's belief system and spiritual identity. In other words, what they're saying is, Let's say you have faith, whether it doesn't, whatever faith you might have, but you go to somebody who doesn't have faith as a counselor, um, they're going to say, well, you know, that doesn't work, that's no good, and blah, blah, blah. What that's, this study found was that if you don't apply the faith that the individual already has, uh, they're less likely to get well. However, they're more, it's more significant in that they are more likely to get well if you apply the faith that they already have. And it doesn't matter what religion that person is coming from, they have a faith and that faith adds a little bit more. Now as a Christian, I see that I see the faith as a believer in Christ through the Holy Spirit and there's an added reality there to me uh, of the proof of the Bible. And as I've said before, there's 3,000 and more Bible promises that have all come true. So it's very detailed uh, in many of those Bible promises. No other religion can make that claim. So it backs up that there is a power there. There's something more than just what others might be have faith in. So as a Christian, yeah, I'm, I believe that way and I'm enhanced that way. But if somebody has strong faith in something, well, yeah, use that faith, you know, apply it in some way, because that gives you a little extra something in the healing processes of whatever you're working through. And that's what that study is talking about, that those individuals are helped uh, we could say more quickly, um, uh, their healing is enhanced when you apply that faith that they already have. Drawing upon the rich repository of biblical narratives, we find countless examples in the Bible that helps us to, okay, yeah, it worked there. So if it worked there, you know, here's some examples. And we get all those examples in the Bible and we see these detailed things, including archaeology and all of that, that have all been backed up and, and uh, uh, down to the dates and, and times and, and everything, we, we can prove those things out, enhances the faith, doesn't it? It kind of supports your belief in whatever that might be. Yeah, I believe God is real. I believe He, um, what He says happens. I believe those things that he has demonstrated through the characters and examples in the Bible, if those things are historical and have happened, and we have history proving them out, we have archaeology proving it out, we have uh, uh, individuals who have been there, saw that, wrote it down, and so on. They didn't go 200, 300, 400 years before they started writing about it. They started writing about it almost immediately. You know, within 30 years, we had the first epistles. And uh, so now we, okay, yeah, that gives my faith. It, it builds my faith. It strengthens me, helps me to 
face whatever circumstances I'm, I'm facing. So these stories offer inspiration and practical guidance in overcoming those obstacles for new beginnings, those obstacles for change. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about a few of the popular ones like David's encounter with Goliath. You know, it's a classic example of overcoming fear and faith. Did David have fear? I, you know, I didn't really say he was afraid. Um, why not? Well, he was a teenager, I think, uh, however old he was in his teens, late teens. Um, it was like, well, you know, I did this, I did that with God's help when, before shepherding the sheep. I, I can do this, you know, that that adolescent sense of um, uh, I can live forever type thing, you know, and we all thought that way when we were adolescents, it was a phase that we went through. So maybe he didn't have any fear at that moment. He, he had faith. He trusted because of the examples that were in the past that God got him through those different things in the past. Well, if he did that, he can do this. Despite that lack of uh, experience of adulthood uh, and, and lack of having armor, David's unwavering faith in God empowered him to confront and defeat Goliath. His faith was his greatest weapon. Uh, that, you know, that was powerful. Think of faith as a weapon. Uh, boy, if you've got to attack a problem, you want to attack it with faith, not with a pencil or, or, or a tool or a sword or whatever, because even if you didn't have the proper weapons that we think of in battle, faith can get you through anything. And that's how he approached that. And, and he declared, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Facing potential death, Queen Esther, her decisions to approach the king when it was, if you can't talk to the king without being invited to talk to the king or you die. And that was the decree. And she had the courage to face the king. And, and she said, if I perish, I perish. And that demonstrated her resolve to face the fears for a greater good. Initially plagued by self-doubt and fear, Gideon's army or Gideon himself with, with the, an angel transforms a normal person, you might say, just an average person into a mighty warrior. God's reassurance and signs such as the fleece test uh, was crucial in, in bolstering his faith and to overcome those insecurities. Have you ever in the past said, well, God, I don't know if I want to, well, if you do this, then I'll know it's you, you know, and uh, well, that's a fleece test. You know, I recall, and I, I've said this before, but it, it's, it's often fresh in my mind. Uh, many years ago when I started uh, in the radio, um, I had a ra live radio program in WAPN in Daytona Beach uh, uh, for about 15 years. Um, and I was praying one day and that came up very strongly inside of me that I would be on the radio. Uh, and I thought, oh, no, I can't do that. You know, that's not me. And, and, and I was still working on my first master's degree. Uh, and uh, I said, oh, no, you know, I don't have the credentials or this or that, you know. Well, Lord, if you really want me to, if this is really you and it's not just me, then you're going to have to show me. You're going to have to prove it somehow so I'll know it's you so I won't have a doubt. And I'm not going to say this to anybody. I'm not going to bring it up to anybody. So nobody's going to know this is what I've heard, for, what I think I've heard from you. Um, so whatever happens, I'll know it's you, but you're going to have to do it. You'll have to prove it to me first. Yeah. I'm not going to reach out and call somebody and say, hey, I'd like to do a radio program. I had no idea what to do if I, if I were to do that anyway. A year went by, yeah, maybe about a year and a half went by. And one day I get a phone call from the radio station that my name was the first name to come up that they needed a Christian counselor um, on, uh, on the program because they were getting so many calls for help from people. I knew right away, okay, Lord, that's you. 
Yeah, I, I still get a little tingle thinking about it. Um, and I didn't get, I didn't act like I was excited or anything. I just, well, 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 let's, well I'll think about that. Maybe we could sit down and talk about it and then see. Uh, 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 and, and with God's help, we was able to do it and stay on that program for about 15 years. Um, and we, I took calls and um, it, it was, it was a learning experience, a growing experience. And I, I'm sure also a helpful experience for, for many folks, but that's a fleece. But we don't say, well, you're, you're gonna have to make the roof fall before I know that's you. Well, now you're teasing God, now you're mocking God, you know, and that's what he says, don't do that. So some people say, well, we're not supposed to do that. No, don't do something ridiculous like that. Be honest with them, uh, be forthright in it, and he'll, he'll give you what he knows you need, or he'll not give it to you if he knows that's not what's right for you. Initially plagued with those doubts, uh, Gideon got through what he got through. Peter is another example in the, in the New Testament. Peter is attempting to walk on water toward Jesus. And then we, I don't know if I'd have done that, you know, even in the boat. I, oh, you're walking on water. If you're doing it, I can do it. Would, I don't know if, would you do that? I would, I probably would have trouble with it. But like I said earlier, sometimes I'll just do something uh, uh, the first time to see if it's going to work. And, you know, and, and uh, uh, if it does, great. And if not, then I'll know not to do that again. But Peter did that, you know, he, he did it. And he, and he walked on water, didn't he, as, as we read, even though he had some trouble. And so although he falters due to fear and doubt, this incident highlights the extraordinary feats that we can go through that's possible for us with God's help through faith. I add in there with God's help because we can have faith, we can believe we can do something, but if we're not supposed to do it, God's not helping us. He's not going to help us. And, and so we might not succeed in whatever that might be, or we might succeed, but it turns out to be something bad, something not good for us. We need God's help as well. We need his willingness or his desire. There needs to be a good reason for it. And in doing so, it's going to succeed. Paul's transformation is another good example. Paul's transformation from the uh, being the persecutor of Christians, uh, the guy who went out there and um, I'm a man of God and I'm going to get rid of all those Christians who call themselves Christians. You know, they're, they're defying our faith and so on and so forth. And, and what did God do? God turned him around, uh, a pivotal apostolic figure and, and the change that occurred in his life despite facing persecution, his letters reflect his courage and determination in spreading the gospel. I can't imagine everything he went through. You know, when I read the gospel, when I read the epistles, I, I think, oh, I could have never gone through that. Or how, how does he keep going? You know, what, what strength does he have to be able to do all of those things? And yet he was able to, not out of his own strength, but out of God's desire, God's help, and his faith, exercising that faith. All these biblical accounts serve as compelling evidence of the power of faith, the, that ability to overcome daunting fears and doubts. So they teach us something. They teach us that I have worthiness, you have worthiness, you have value to God. You might not have value to yourself, but he has value for you. Believe in that, have faith in that, and your value to yourself will increase. And that value will increase in the eyes of others that are close to you and who are aware of you. But mostly it's that value you have about yourself. Do you have low self-esteem? Have you been dealing with feeling worthless? powerless, helpless, uh, fearful, apprehensive? Do you get angry quickly? 
Anger is a sign of fear. It's not a sign of power. It's a sign of fear. Whenever you see an angry person, they're actually afraid. They're protecting themselves through anger. And in protecting themselves, they're demonstrating they're afraid. I'll get somebody who might blow up at me in counseling because of some, you know, they hit a nerve. You know, and I know right away. Oh, we got we got we got to a core there. That he's afraid or she's afraid, and they're they're getting they're self-protective at that moment because a threat just occurred, and that's fear. Well, where there's fear, there's no faith. Where there's fear, there's a weakness there, there's a problem that needs healing. And, and if we can get to that problem and heal it, the anger is going to go away. It's going to dissipate. The need to protect self all the time is going to dissipate over time. As we've talked about, especially last time we mentioned conditioned responses or learned responses. Well, yeah, those, those things are, we practice it over and over again and, and it becomes automatic. They dissipate when we address those fearful things, when we face the anger and recognize, oh, that's really my fear. Why am I afraid? Where's the source of that fear? And in Christian counseling, we can identify that with the help of God through looking at those things that are the roots of fear or the roots of bitterness. In moments of overwhelming negativity, turning to God for guidance can provide the strength and clarity needed to navigate these challenges. In the Christian tradition, faith is a cornerstone of strength and perseverance. Hebrews 11.1 1 defines faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if you think about that for a moment, it suggests that Faith provides believers with certainty and hope, even without the tangible evidence, e even without the, the proof. I have faith that this is something God would want me to do. Therefore, God is going to help me to do. And if I trust in God in that, I'm going to do it. I'll get through it and I'll come out better. Even if there are difficulties, I'll come out better than those who are trying to go through that same thing without God's help. The Bible offers stories and lived experiences of overcoming fear and doubt through faith and reliance on God. These narratives are timeless reminders that with faith, we can conquer even the most formidable challenges and embark on new beginnings and confidence and determination. You want to make a change? Bring that faith in there. Grab that faith. Start drawing closer to God. Start learning more about God. Start learning more about your walk with God. Increasing your faith, you're going to be able to make those changes. While fear and doubt are significant emotional barriers to new beginnings, they're not unconquerable foes. By employing a comprehensive approach that includes mental, emotional, which is psychological, so mental, emotional, and spiritual strategies, individuals can begin to dismantle these barriers, paving a new way, paving that way towards that new beginning, towards the personal growth that you want to make. My personal growth may be different than yours. Yours may be different than mine and someone else's. It's what you want to make. If, if there's a personal growth, a change you want to make, ask God. If you get that confirmation that, yeah, that's what he wants you to do too. Now you've got that extra something to give you that little bit more of faith that you can do whatever that is. And then instead of saying, I can't, you'll be saying, I can. The journey may be challenging, but with faith, resilience, and the proper support, it's possible to overcome these obstacles and embrace the path ahead with assurance, with confidence, with hope.
you'll be able to do those things that have been so difficult that you couldn't do before. Take that first step. Reach out for some help, whether it's through your pastor, a close friend, uh, someone you trust, uh, a family member, uh, whoever you can reach out to, reach out. Help draw, help, let them help you to draw closer to God, closer to uh, that power that is there, that passion that is there that, that's capable of reaching, that you're capable of reaching for to give you that little extra something to make that next step in whatever change you'd like to make. And we're talking about positive changes. Keep in mind those things that are good, those things that are going to build you up or those things that are going to improve your life in some way. You have the capability of doing that. And with help, you can get through just about anything. Well, I hope this was helpful as we talked about fear and, and, and doubt. There's so much to talk about in that area, and we'll be talking more about fear and doubt in the future. But next time in this series of New Beginnings, we're going to talk about finding purpose in new beginnings. God bless. May your troubles be minor, blessings more, and happiness come through your door. We'll see you next time.